uh, there's been good news and bad news on the gas front. A gas pipeline has burst today and uh, a gale pipeline in which 16 people have died. At the same time, there's been good news uh, from uh, whichever way you look at it, that gas prices have been stayed for the next three months and the NDA government is, is for it, whether they should actually go through with the same pricing which uh, the Rangarajan Commission wanted to or they're going to make changes in that, that's going to be up for debate for the next three months. So what, a, I mean, what better time than this to actually kick off that debate? So um, the panel discussion is going to come next, but let me start with uh, Paranjoy Guha Thakurta, who's written this very interesting and controversial book, Gas Wars, Chromny Capitalism and the Ambani's. It's been launched in Delhi, it's actually in that sense, launching it first time in Mumbai. So many congratulations and round of applause. Um, I think he's he's gone through a lot. Uh, he's gone through a lot, uh, fighting to publish this book, both from a financial point of view, as well as from the point of view of the kind of harassment he's faced to actually see that it sees the light of day. So uh, it's been a real honor from the point of view of the press club to welcome him here. As as a as a as a very uh, brave and uh, struggling journalist who's come out with this uh, exposure, and what he feels about the gas pricing and the Ambani's. So could I ask him to just introduce it in say 10-15 minutes? Uh, maybe do a few readings if he wants from it, and also maybe uh, talk about the kind of pressures and problems he's faced to put it on the street and in the book stands. Uh, welcome, Paranjoy. And if I can give you a mic amongst all these, I don't know which one is ours. All right. OK. Th thank you. Thank you so much, Gurbir. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm truly honored. I'm, I'm privileged. I'm grateful to the press club here at Mumbai for organizing uh, this occasion. And uh, uh, all kinds of things happened. Maybe Gurbir can tell you more on another occasion. We were not sure whether this event would take place until it's happened. I'm particularly grateful to Mr. Manishankar Aya, to Govind Raj, to Kumar Ji in particular. It was Kumar uh, Ketkar's idea that I call Manishankar Aya, and I'm truly grateful to him that he immediately said yes. Okay, uh, just a few uh, remarks. Uh, maybe I'll just speak for about 10 minutes a little bit about the book and then a little bit about what happened after the book was published. You know, this book has been in the making for about four and a half years. I've been, me and my colleagues, we've been working on it because. Uh, I, I, th I thought, I mean, I've been interested in the issue of natural resources, how natural resources are allocated, how they are priced, and uh, I, I think it's an issue uh, that concerns every single citizen of this country uh, because the natural resources belong to the people of this country. And if the government or those who are supposed to represent the people don't act in a fair, balanced uh, manner, then that leads to different forms of cronyism. So whether you look at land, whether it's water, whether it's iron ore, whether it's coal, whether it's telecommunication spectrum, we've had allegations uh, all over about the way in which the, uh, these resources have been misallocated or mispriced. Uh, this book uh, runs into, the main book is about 400 pages. There Uh, this book runs into about, this book is 600 pages long, but the main book is 400 pages, and there are 200 pages of annexures and appendices, including a lot of documents and uh, uh, reports uh, which have been put out. The book began as really looking at the fight between the two Ambani brothers, because I believe that the main reason why Dhirubhai Ambani's empire got partitioned was because the brothers didn't agree with each other on the way in which natural gas from the Krishna Godavari Basin would be allotted and priced. I mean, there could have been a thousand and one reasons why the two brothers didn't get along with each other. It could be because Nita and Tina weren't the best of friends. But I, I said that there could be, despite all these reasons, uh, it was really the two brothers broke uh, the Dhirubhai Ambani's empire, business empire, on this issue. because. Anil Ambani believed that he could get gas at 
2.34 dollars per unit for 17 years because NTPC uh, in an NTPC bid, RIL had said, Reliance Industries said they would get it. The gas would come more than 2,000 kilometers from the coast, uh, southeastern coast of India and Andhra Pradesh to a place near da called Dadri near Delhi. And there, Asia's biggest and India's biggest and one of the world's biggest gas-based power plants was supposed to come up. Now, we know that didn't work out. The brothers fought. Bombay High Court ruled in favor of the younger brother. Then it went to the Supreme Court. And, and the Supreme Court uh, ruled in favor of the older brother. But what was very interesting, and uh, this is something that a lot of us didn't realize, was what some of the things that the Supreme Court said when it ruled in favor of the older brother. And therefore, I'll, I'll just read out a very small uh, bit about this. It says, a small, a small portion of our population over the past two decades has been chanting incessantly for increased privatization of material resources of the community. Some of them even doubt whether the goals of equality and social justice are capable of being addressed directly. They argue that economic growth will eventually trickle down and lift everyone up. For those at the bottom of the economic and social pyramid, it appears that the nation has forsaken those goals as unattainable at best and unworthy at worst. The new liberal agenda has increasingly eviscerated the state of stature and power, bringing vast benefits to the few, modest benefits for some, while leaving everybody else, the majority, behind. Uh, then it goes on and talks about how historically across the globe, you know, here you hear about free markets and freedom to market. And then he goes on to say, that water, forests, minerals, and oil, they are all being privatized and not being satisfied. The voices that speak for predatory capitalism seek more. Now, what truly amazed me, but that this was not me, uh, or it was no left-wing radical. It was no communist ideologue who was saying this. But here was a judge of the Supreme Court saying this. So, um, I mean, to me, this aspect of the judgment, I think, was not as widely reported. Uh, anyway, the brothers fell apart, and then we had the Controller and Auditor General's report, which said that, look, there was a lot that was wrong with the production sharing contract. And one of the big criticisms they had, they didn't use this phrase, but they're saying it's like gold plating. That means there was no incentive for Reliance Industries Limited to economize on capital expenditure. It, it's a bit like water. You know, you're still supplying gas or water, but whether you have the water in, in a paper cup or a glass glass, or whether you have it in a gold plated goblet. So there was no incentive to economize on capital expenditure, and there were a host of other reasons. Uh, you see, this is the second part of the book, which talks about the flaws in the contract that the government signed. And, and here, the government is responsible. I mean, any privately owned corporate entity would like to maximize its profits, but if the government cannot protect the interests of the people, that's the problem. And it, this uh, also includes uh, the last interview that uh, Subi Raha gave me before he died of cancer. He was the former chairman and managing director of ONGC, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation. And he talked about how records were missing. He couldn't find records. So there were a lot of things. And then the last part of it is also includes a speech which Mr. Mani Shankar Ayer gave uh, in private, in a private gathering. And so uh, that's the, the, the second part of the book. And, the third part of the book is about the environmental disaster that could happen. I'm not saying it's happened or will happen, but what a lot of people don't know is that if there is land subsidence in that area, in the Krishna Godavari Basin, that happens to be India's most, uh, um, most, uh, uh, high, most productive area where paddy is cultivated. So uh, I've talked a little bit about that. And the last part of it is really talking about the nexus between business and politics, the circumstances that led to Mr. Iyer being removed from his office, the circumstances that led to Mr. Uh, Murli Deora replacing him, and then how Mr. Murli Deora was moved, and Mr. Jaipal Reddy was made the minister, and then he was removed, and then uh, Virappa Moili became the petroleum minister. This book ends on the 24th of March, the day the election commission announced a stay on the increase of gas prices. Uh, a little bit of background, me and uh, another person known to me, we had originally signed up with Penguin. Uh, the person who was supposed to collaborate with me, he decided to part ways. 
after a fair amount of the book had been done. So Penguin didn't want me to be the sole author, so that contract was terminated. I signed a fresh contract with HarperCollins, and this was in April 2012, and uh, they wanted me to deliver the manuscript in April 2013. I delayed submitting the manuscript, and then I was pressurizing them after I'd submitted the manuscript to bring it out quickly. They said that uh, they wanted the book to be cut down to half its size which was not acceptable to me. They also said that if I did that, then they could bring out the book by May. To me, that was also not acceptable because uh, I wanted the book out when the heat and dust of the elections were on. And thanks to my colleague who's here, uh, Manish Purohit of Authors Upran. Manish, please stand up. Ma Manish runs an organization, uh, he's the founder of an organization called Authors Upfront. And they help publishers, help authors publish. So I was uh, lucky to meet him. And thanks to him, uh, this book came out very early. It came out in uh, late March. And uh, we had a function in, uh, uh, in the middle of April. And after that, to my surprise, and this was a real surprise, on the day the book was formally launched in, in Delhi, uh, Gopal Gandhi, who was a former governor of West Bengal, he made a speech at a public meeting. It was held in Vigyan Bhavan, which is the government of India's uh, 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 auditorium, and this was the occasion was uh, the completion of the Golden Jubilee celebration of the CBI, the Central Bureau of Investigation. And on that occasion, everybody, including me, were completely taken aback when Mr. Gandhi, from a public forum, he, he made some amazing statements. He said, once upon a time, you thought there was a parallel economy. Now we have a parallel state. And then he named Reliance. And then he said that perhaps never before, in the history of this part of the world has one single company exercised so much influence on, on, on resources, on the financial resources, the human resources, the natural resources. That was not me, but Mr. Gandhi. In fact, uh, uh, after that day, the next day, I got a legal notice from Khaitan and Company on behalf of uh, Reliance Industries Limited and its chairman and managing director, Mr. Mukesh Ambani. And uh, they said that uh, I had criminally defamed them. So I said, where, how? And uh, soon thereafter, another letter came from Mullah and Mullah from ADAG Anil Dhirumai Ambani Group. Then a third uh, legal notice came because the first notice hadn't mentioned uh, any date uh, by which I should reply or any damages. So this time they said 10 days, 100 crores. And then uh, uh, after one replied to that legal notice, another legal notice came to me. Uh, a reply to the reply came saying, no, that I had defamed uh, Mr. Ambani. And, and some of the parts they got, they were very upset with. And I, I, you can tell me I'm reading it out. Therefore, I'm sort of risking uh, a little bit here. So they were very upset with the way I sort of concluded the book. And, and the, the, the concluding chapter uh, was, uh, the concluding line, I, I beg your pardon, was something to the effect that Give me just a little bit of time. Yeah. Uh, uh, I said, as we close this incomplete chronicle of how a single corporate conglomerate led by an oligarch fine-tuned the art of crony capitalism in collusion with particular polit politicians and pliant bureaucrats, it's important to emphasize that within the same government establishment there are functionaries who have refused to be intimidated and who have, against all odds, valiantly attempted to uphold the interests of not just the exchequer but the people of India. So they were upset that I described Mr. Ambani as an oligarch. So they said, this is defamatory. I said, please take me to court. I mean, uh, what can I say? Uh, they said, at one point, I said, the two brothers, when they were fighting over Krishna Godavari gas, they were vengeful and greedy. They said, this is defamatory. Then, then I said that, you know, uh, there was uh, pressure to remove Mr. Manishankar Ayer uh, and, and uh, kick upstairs Mr. Jaipal Reddy. So I said, if anybody should be defamed, it should be Dr. Manmohan Singh who should be feeling defamed because I'm saying he's, after all, the prime minister. It's his prerogative to decide who is in his cabinet and council of ministers. So anyway, the story is as follows. They not only harassed me and intimidated me, there were others who felt intimidated. There's a legal word for it, S-L-A-P-P. Strategic lawsuits against public participation. So it's not only the author, my co-authors, it was not only Flipkart and Amazon and the printers and the publishers against whom these legal notices were served. There, there were others, you know, Sucheta Dalal's Money Life, she reviewed the book in her, in her publication and website, and she also got a le legal notice saying 100 crore rupees. 
What was amazing was there was this young woman. She's the events manager of an organization called the Foundation for Media Professionals. I used to be the president of that organization. She did me a personal favor by forwarding the electronic invite of the event on the 15th of April. She was served a legal notice. So I was truly amazed that uh, uh, the, the way they did. Now, much of the mainstream media did not have anything to write about the book. Outlook magazine did something. Mr. Prem Shankar Jha and Tehelka wrote about it. But much of the ma mainstream media, for them, this book hadn't been published until this legal notice was served. And then everybody, all the newspapers, all the magazines, they started writing about it. And before I knew it, the sales of the book had gone up. So then in the, in the fourth legal notice, said, you have gained commercially. So I said, yes, OK, I'm the publisher. I've also gained commercially. So, so this is where the position stands. Uh, there was a lot of uh, people did feel intimidated. But the fact is, this book is available online. It's available in bookstores. And, and that's really where it stands. You are aware that the government has decided to postpone the price of increase in the price of gas, that, that's not surprising uh, because uh, Mr. Yashwan Sinha had headed a committee of which Mr. Piyush Goel also was a member and in that committee they had made a very, very strong recommendation that gas prices should not be increased as per the recommendations of the Rangarajan formula. So uh, there are cases pending in court at the, as we talk about. On the day before the elections were announced, uh, India's biggest public sector undertaking, ONGC, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, moved the Delhi High Court saying Reliance Industries has stolen 30,000 crores worth of gas from uh, its wells. It's, it's a petition in the court. That has to be decided. Uh, I don't know when this government will come to a thing. So this is an ongoing story. But at the end of the day, you may say it's not important. Natural gas accounts for barely 10% of the total energy requirements of this country. And of that 10%, OK. ONGC produces maybe 60%, Reliance maybe produces 25%, and we are importing another 15%. So, but nevertheless, uh, this has become a highly controversial and a highly politicized issue, and almost like a case study of uh, the nexus between business and politics in this country. Thank you very much. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you.